Hello, this is Gary Marr of Glendale Community College. This screencast is for my CIS 156 Python 1 students. In this screencast, I want to talk about using the debugger inside your IDE. Thony has a debugger, Visual Studio has a debugger, PyCharm has a debugger, Wingware 101, PyScripter, some of the IDEs I've mentioned in Canvas on the resources page. But today I'm going to focus on Thony. All of these debuggers pretty much um, help you in the same ways, but there are slight differences in the way they operate. So if you're using another IDE, some of this stuff is going to look very similar and some of this stuff is going to be a little different because of the way Thony handles it. In Thony, what I'm going to do is load my code. And then once it's loaded, I've got a little icon just to the right of the run button. I can also activate this with a control F5 that's going to launch the debugger. Now, what the debugger is going to do is it's going to execute my code, just like the run button, except it's going to do it a line at a time. And I can either step into that line, I can step over the line, or I can step out of, in this case, a function. We really haven't gotten to those, those things yet. That's a couple of chapters uh, down the road. What's nice about this is that I can watch the values of variables. I can see the, variable, the values of constants. If I have an if statement, I can tell which branch the program actually took. Could be different than the one I expected. In the case of looping, I can watch and see how many times the program stayed inside a loop. Again, it could have been incorrect, so it'll help me isolate that. And also useful when we get to functions, which is a couple of chapters down the road. So um, what I'm going to do today is talk about how Thony implements the debugger. And I'll probably talk a little bit about how it's done other, um, with other IDEs or even other languages. Um, pretty much any program you'll ever do will be with some kind of IDE and it'll probably include a debugger because they're that useful. So in this case, um, the way Thony works is that it doesn't have a concept of a breakpoint. And that's a little different. For those of you who have used debuggers before, that's going to seem a little mysterious. What Thony is, is since it's an educational IDE, it's going to automatically start debugging the very first statement in the program, although I will show you a way of getting through large blocks of code without running the debugger. Um, it's an educational product, so it's not assuming you have very big programs. I've worked on programs that were thousands of lines long. I wouldn't really want to execute every line in the program, and this is where a breakpoint comes in handy. A breakpoint lets me stop it at anywhere in the program, line 200, line 400, or around where I think my problem is. Thony doesn't really support that very well, so it just assumes you're going to want to look at every line because it also assumes that the programs are smaller because Thony's largely um, uh, developed for learning how to program in Python. It also has something called watch, or most debuggers also have something called watch points where you can specify certain variables, identifiers that you want to have watched while the program's running. And there's typically a side window that would show you those variables throughout the entire program. And any time they changed, that window would change with its new value. Now, Thony supports something like that with what's called a variables window. It's off here on the right side of my screen. I get to that by going to View and then selecting Variables. So far, we've pretty much just worked with Shell, a little bit with Files in the very first lecture. But we now want to click Open Variables so that we can see what the variables will look like and how they change, much like a watch point. So now, if I just simply click on the little bug there and let it start running, the screen will go yellow to indicate that it's running in, de in debug mode. It's not running; the pro it's still running the program, but it's running the special mode, debug mode. It stopped at the first executable statement, which happens to be the assignment of a constant. It's going to give this particular constant a value of 10. Now, if I step into that, step into it actually is asking to execute the statement because it hasn't executed yes it just stopped there that's all so if I click on this it executes the statement now Thony's a little bit different it's going to break the statement down into pieces again because it's an educational IDE it's going to tell us there's a numeric literal of 10 and uh, there it's assigned that value of 10 to 10 it then's going to place that value of 10 into what is a constant called hot dogs per package that's reflected over here in this values window. The next statement, same kind of things happening, this time a different constant. It's going to have a value of 8. That's complete. 
Um, this is the first assignment of a variable. Same idea, it has a value of zero. Now, the rest of these statements really are not of much interest to me. I don't think there's much you could go wrong with those since they're simply assigning initial value to the variable. So what I'm going to do is position my cursor on this first input statement that's looking for input from this, the uh, user. I'm going to put my cursor down there. I'm going to say run, and I'm going to say run to cursor. Now it jumps all these statements. I can still see they're executed over here in the variables window. They have values. But it's now going to ask me about this assignment of a variable called number tending that has as part of it a uh, built-in Python input function and then also an int function, which converts this string input to an integer. So if I step into this line, it's going to break it apart. It's going to say, okay, that's the right-hand side. That's the, um, the input function, the input function. The middle part is just a string literal used for a prompt or display. It now is going to show this down the shell window waiting for my input. I put the value of 10. Hit enter. Again, it started to show that 10 is going to be what's assigned or converted to an integer. If I step into that, it executes that. And then eventually here, a couple clicks later, I'm going to see that my input is number attending is now equal to 10. Now, those of you who used other um, debuggers are probably going to wonder why you're clicking on the step into so much. Well, Thony is an educational IDE, so it's breaking things down at a much simpler level for training purposes. Normally, it's just a single click. This one could be three or four. Um, the next one is going to be asking me about the number of hot dogs per person. Let's walk through this one. Okay, same kind of thing happening here. It's going to put a prompt up in the screen. I'm going to say it's, oh, uh, let's give them two hot dogs per person. And again, I'm going to step into, step into, step into. Now it's going to do the total. For, maybe I'm not interested in walking through all of this, but this particular example has some if statements also as part of it. Maybe I want to come down to this statement here and see what happens with that. So again, I can position my cursor there, go to run, run to cursor, and now it's stopped at this big block that involves this um, if expression. So I can check what min buns are. Min buns are 2. If min buns are greater than 0, so is 2 greater than 0, it is. So I'm assuming this will execute as true. So let's see what happens if it actually does. Step into, step into, step into, step into, step into. Again, I, I apologize for all these clicking. It's true. That's going to take that branch there, which is what was predicted. Now, this is where you're going to find your logic errors. <laughs> if that was supposed to be greater than or equal, and you only had greater than, that might be a logic error. And the code might not execute when you tested like you expected it to. So then you'd say to yourself, you know what? I think I made a mistake there. My logic is wrong. I need greater than or equal to zero and not just greater than zero. This happens to be correct, but I think you can see what how the debugger might help you. It's going to walk you through the branching of your statements, and you're also going to see this on um, your looping when you uh, go through your loops, which is you know coming up in uh, the chapters uh, that are behind us here, or ahead of us, I should say. Now, um, that's kind of long and short of it. Um, if you want to stop the debugger, you can hit this stop sign here, and that will cancel everything. In fact, you want to make sure you do that. If you are in the middle of debugging and you want to go back and start making some changes, you got to be careful that this, this other session's actually been stopped. It's not going to let you go very much farther. It's going to stop you cold. Just hit the stop button. Now you can come back and work in your program, or you might just want to run it normally without the debugger. And in this case, if I ran it without the debugger, that's what it looks like. And obviously with a debugger, it's going to go through it step by step by step. The values, uh, the variables over here are still going to display if you run it in normal mode. But I think probably they're more useful if you're going to run it in debug mode. Well, that's the Thony debugger. And um, Visual Studios is probably more robust and a lot different. Um, another product we've used a lot of is Wingware 101 or Wing 101, which is a, a company that develops a pretty nice com little IDE for Python. It has a free version called Wing 101 we've used in the past. That also has maybe a little bit more robust debugger that allows you to do longer programs. But I think Thony will drive home the point of why debuggers and debugging is important in finding errors in your software. Now, that's it for today. Hopefully that helped you out. Thank you.